Hi everybody, Nate here from WASD20. Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dungeon Dressing Dice. Alright guys, so here we have them. Dungeon Dressing Dice from Incognito Solutions. Let's open them up and take a look. Incognito Solutions sent me these things ooh, over a month ago now, so I've had them for a while, been sitting on them, and I've had the chance to use them quite a bit, and I really like them overall. Um, this little cardboard sleeve here, I don't see myself really hanging on to. Let me just put that in a drawer somewhere, because uh, this is pretty much good enough. I guess if you're traveling with them, you might want this, um, just to keep them a little more secure. But this is held right here by a magnet, which I really love. Overall, I am really into this box unreasonably into this box even. I just absolutely love it. I love it. It's so cute. It's like a little brick. Okay. Anyway, let's open them up and take a look. So I'm going to adjust my exposure a little bit here so we can get a better look. Okay. I'm not sure if that did anything, but here we have the dice. So we're going to start uh, taking a look here. Uh, the sets are, I think this is ancient ruins or something like that. So you've got ancient ruins. Uh, we have, oh boy, temple. Uh, we've got the Lord's Manor. We've got uh, cave or cavern. We've got wizard's study. We've got a tavern. We have a dungeon. And we have, ooh, is this a castle? I think it's a castle. All right, so let's take a look one by one here. Let's start with the cave set here or caverns. This uh, one has some crystals, some bats, some cave paintings, some mushrooms. Uh, we've got stalagmites and stalactites here. And this one here, I can't really tell what it is. I, like maybe a, a hole in the ground with stalactite, stalagmites going into it. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> this one here, we've got the wizard's study. So we've got a globe, got some books, a crystal ball, a bubbling cauldron, a telescope, and one more thing. Ah, a rack or a shelf of potions. Very nice. Here are the ancient ruins. So we've got these hieroglyphics here. We've got a, I think this is a, a brazier. How do people say that word? Post your pronunciation in the comments below. I won't be able to understand it, but maybe I can if you spell it phonetically. All right. <laughs> this is a broken pillar. This looks like some kind of idol or figurine. This I'm not quite sure of. Like maybe just a... It looks like a file cabinet, <laughs> kind of. But I think it's supposed to be at some kind of table or altar, maybe. And, whoops, I think I'm missing one yet. Maybe that's all of them. Oh, I think I didn't do this one yet, a broken pot. Yeah, clay pot it looks like. We've got this one here, this is a temple. Um, overall, I have to say the quality on these is really, really good. Um, now, I've been using them for a month and I didn't notice any issues at all. But now that I have them like close up under camera, I do notice there's a little bit of a blue hue and a little like bluish stain right there. Uh, very minor, overall really good quality. So this is like some kind of altar, definitely uh, a jar or vase, canopic jar almost. Uh, this is one of those incense swinging coal thingies, you know. <laughs> this is a stained glass window, I believe. Some candles. Um, I think I got, oh. Some kind of bowl. It looks like a baptismal font or some kind of like holy water almost. Very cool. The dungeon. So this one's got some shackles and chains. We've got some, a stockade. Got a spider web. Got a cage or cell. Looks like a sewer grate opening. And we've got a skull. Then we've got the tavern. We've got our kegs here, or barrels of something, probably ale. But you can decide. You're the dungeon master. Or are you? Lantern. A bear rug. Fish mounted on the wall. Game board. A lute. You know, one of those roundish guitar type things. I think it's a lute. Yeah, so overall, pretty cool on that one. Uh, I see some, you know, very minor issues here, like a little missing line there. Here and there, a little, like, discoloration, like, right here on the fish. But very, very minor issues, and I, I haven't noticed them. <laughs> I've been playing with them for 
a month now. All right, so this one is the Lord's Manor. This one gets a little more modern in feel, definitely. Like, I don't know if this would fit very well in my dark fantasy sort of setting. Uh, but certainly nice to have a little variety in the mix and uh, nice to have one that's a little bit, I think, more of a modern setting or uh, maybe a Renaissance flavor to it. This looks like straight up William Shakespeare there. That is a portrait of William Shakespeare, my friends. Okay, maybe not. Then we've got a uh, flower pot. Looks like a wardrobe, a clock, a table, or desk, an easy chair, a lazy boy, and I think that's all on that one. And lastly, we have the King's Castle. So we've got some kind of bust statue, a fireplace, a shield or a coat of arms, a weapon rack, uh, then we got this suit of armor that looks like it will animate at any moment and crush you. And missing one thing. Ah, oh, this tapestry. I do think there's a little bit of uh, repetition here. The shield is a little bit like the tapestry. But that's fine. So there's a couple ways that uh, you can use these. And you can read all about them on the Kickstarter page. I will put a link in the description. And um, one way is in planning your adventures. So we could try that right now. Let's do it. We're going to take, um, we'll take the dungeon, we'll take the temple, and we'll take the wizard study. And we're just going to roll three, and we're going to make an adventure with these. Sort of, kind of, some kind of story or encounter or something. All right, so we've got a potion, we've got one of these swinging incense thingies, and we've got a sewer grate. All right, so I'm going to imagine, uh, okay, I've got, I've got an idea, I've got an idea. The ideas are cooking. All right, so um, the players smell something very strange, uh, just something really, really odd. And they're, they're in a the city. Uh, they follow their noses, and it's, it's intoxicating. And it kind of draws them in. It's the best thing they've ever smelled, let's say. And it is this kind of incense that is burning outside of a building. It's a strange container. It's got a, a wide staring eye on it. Uh, made of gemstones, but unusually lifelike. And if the players were to... And, and the rest of this place has an eerie glow to it. And the players are drawn in. They decide to explore. They knock on the door. No one answers. Inside they go. It is a wizard's laboratory. And everything seems... In, in its place, warm and inviting, a fire is burning in the hearth. But there is a strange howl they can hear, a shriek. And it's coming out of a, a grate in the middle of this room. And they notice that there is smashed bottles of potion spilling down into this sewer grate. What will they find? I don't know. Okay, so there you go. So you can kind of get a feel for how you can use these just to inspire adventures. And, you know, you could you could roll the same things here and you could get, you know, a million different ideas. Your mind can go in so many different directions, right? So that's the cool thing. That even if you did happen to roll the same combination, like, no one would have done what I just did with that. And I would never do what you would do with this combination, I don't think. So that's, that's really cool. I like that. Um... So that's one way you can use them by Adventure Rep. And I already have used them that way, and uh, it's worked out pretty well. I actually rolled um, one that sticks out to me is I rolled a lantern. I don't even know where that one is. There's a lantern somewhere. And I ended up uh, making a puzzle and finding a, <coughs> a riddle, excuse me, that's answer was lantern, and including that in a uh, game that I ran about a month ago. So that was really cool. Um, and you can roll them on the spot too. So if we're, you know, you're, so you have the wizard study and what, what sticks out at you in this wizard study? You could find all of these things in a wizard study. It would not be at all surprising, but what really sticks out at you? What do you want to draw your player's attention to? The books, of course, there's just books everywhere. The most ancient looking books you've ever seen strewn about some of them in disrepair Others in fine, pristine condition with jewels and leather binding, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, you get the idea here. You could find all of these things in a tavern, right? 
But what is what is, what draws your attention as the players walk in? The largest fish they've ever seen on the wall. Or perhaps it's the smallest. It's just this unusually tiny little fish. Like, why would anyone mount this fish? <laughs> All right, anyway, you get the idea. So um, I have really enjoyed using them. I uh, certainly don't need something like this. And I can see that if you're using this every time your players go into a cavern or a cave, you're going to end up describing the same things. Oh, you notice some crystals. Oh, there's crystals in this room too, <laughs> right? There's these, uh, th there's more bats, right? Uh, so you've got to be careful and, you know, use them in, in limited cases. And I don't think there's anything wrong too with saying, hey, we're in a wizard study, but let's roll the cavern die. There's these strange crystals in the wizard's study. Right? And you get the idea. So you can switch, mix and match. The Kickstarter page even showed using them with a regular numbered die as a possibility. So you can say how many of something there are. So that's another cool idea. Um, lots and lots of different ways you can use them. They definitely remind me a lot. They definitely remind me a lot of Rory's Story Cubes, which maybe some of you guys are familiar with, which I have thought about buying for a long time now and have not pulled the trigger on them. Um, so I'm really happy I have these because I think these are more useful for me in an RPG setting. Rory Story Cubes would be more useful in a general storytelling sense, I think. Uh, but in an RPG setting, I think these are really, really great. And um, yeah, I highly recommend you go check them out. The price for one set of these dice on their Kickstarter is $17 plus $5 shipping anywhere in the U.S. And I think that's a decent value. I don't think it's an incredible deal, but I do think it is a fair price. And I would actually pay that if I didn't already have a set of these. The international shipping, however, I see a lot of people complaining about on the Kickstarter page. Uh, it's a lot more expensive, unfortunately. So if you are kind of an improvisational style DM, I highly recommend them. I don't think they're for everybody, but uh, for cer certain styles of Dungeon Masters, I think they are great. So definitely go check them out. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Leave those down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank you to Alexander from Incognito Solutions. Super cool guy for hooking me up with these. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one, everybody. Take care. You'll see me again very soon.